ago, I helped inaugurate a program for young songwriters, particularly those who were interested in writing for musical theater. And I wanted them to have a safe place where they could hone their craft, spend a week uh, outside of New York, work with a couple of master teachers. Uh, that program is now known as the Johnny Mercer Songwriters Project. It's held every June at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. Uh, in that very first uh, program 13 years ago, there were these two very young songwriters whose work really impressed me. And at the end of the week, because they spend a week there, I went up to them and I said, you know, I want to do whatever I can to help give exposure to your work. And so I said, one of the first things we're going to do, you're going to come to Washington and I want you to come to the Millennium Stage and I want you to present some of your work for a large public. Uh, I have a hunch some of you may have heard of those writers. They went on to write a little musical called Dear Evan Hansen and a little film called uh, 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 Greatest Showman. Well, flash forward to this past June, 13 years later, there were two young theater writers working on their musical One Way, and I was equally impressed. But this time, I actually didn't wait for the week to be up. I went up to them after a couple of days, and I said, I hope your availability will allow you to come to Washington in early October, because I'd like you to present some of your work here in Washington. Well, luckily for me, and luckily for you, they were available. They're here tonight. Please help me welcome two extremely gifted songwriters. Uh, I know you'll really enjoy their work. Please welcome Ben Bonema and Christopher Stasky. I'm Ben Bonema. Hi, I'm Christopher Staskel. Uh, thank you, Michael, AJ, everyone at the Kennedy Center uh, for having us. We are so excited to be here. Um, yeah, as Michael mentioned, we wrote a show called One Way. Um, I wrote the lyrics. I wrote the music. And we write the book together. Um, One Way is inspired by true events. It is about a woman named Naomi who was chosen as a finalist for the first ever One Way mission to Mars. Um, so if she is picked, she will be leaving Earth and never returning. So she has to choose between pursuing this lifelong ambition of hers <coughs> or staying on Earth with the woman she loves, her long-term partner, Elaine. Um, so tonight, yeah, we just want to share some songs with you from the show, uh, and we brought some really good friends um, to help us out. Please welcome Crystal Lucas Perry, Amanda Savin, and Jason Gote. We're going to start with the opening number of the show, um, which seems like the obvious choice now that I think about it. Uh, it's called What I Wouldn't Give. I'm a kid again Sneaking up my second floor window No matter how cold My heart beats faster Eyes grow wider Feels just like it did back then And now you teach climate science at Concordia University And the occasional astronomy 101 But a tenure track Yes And you're willing to give all that up for the mission Leaving the earth is We've been here so long We've gotten used to blue and green But everything inside me that's human Says leaving's not wrong There's many I've lost and not making friends. You need some. 
someone who knows firsthand. You need someone who's in command. I understand the risk of dying. I understand the risk of dying. It's what it might cost. It's risky, but one small life is no big price to see our human reach expand. What I wouldn't give to stand where no one has stood before. There's a world across the cosmic sea. What I wouldn't give to sail a ship to that distant shore. You won't find a stronger nominee. And we need someone to go. And we need someone to go. Someone like me. Babe. It's been a month and a half. These U-Haul boxes don't vibe with my suburbia chic aesthetic. I'll get to it, I promise. You never unpack. Which made this move a lot easier. When I get home, I would love, love, love for the books to be done. No promises. Haven't heard yet? Well, Mars isn't going anywhere, you know. What I wouldn't give to know what others have known before. It's not what gets left behind, but who? Every worthless thing I own could stay boxed up on a shelf. I'd still have to ask myself, are you? What I wouldn't give. What I wouldn't give. Are you? What I wouldn't give. 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 So we're going to do um, the next two songs back to back. Um, the second one you're going to hear, it's called 39 Minutes, 35 Seconds. That's roughly the difference between uh, a day on Mars and a day on Earth. Um, and that's sung by our protagonist, Naomi. So Crystal is going to sing that. Uh, but first, Amanda's going to do a song called Accent Wall. So in this scene, Elaine is painting a wall in their living room, bright blue, when Naomi finds out that she's a finalist for this one-way Mars mission which means they're gonna fly her to Norway for an intensive week of interviews and medical examinations, and it all gets really real all of a sudden. Uh, so Elaine does what any supportive partner would do, contemplate sabotage. Because if she can't find her passport, then she cannot go to Norway. And when she can't go to Norway, I'll just stand there like a saint. Sure, it might seem kind of desperate, but when things aren't going your way, you could sabotage your girlfriend or do nothing and watch paint dry on an accent wall. Have you checked the biscotti tin with all the other important documents? The important document? Does biscotti tin? No! I could fake a mental breakdown and then she won't go to Norway. If she doesn't go to Norway, there's no way that I can lose. Unless she finds her freaking passport, in which case I'll block the doorway with a stack of bricks and mortar, cause this room could really use another accent wall. No luck? No. Well, don't worry, it'll turn up. No, it's not that. It's, it's just... I think it's finally hitting me. I mean, when I applied, it was so unreal, you know? But now... It's really real? <sighs> yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna go, obviously. What? I mean, come on. To Norway, sure. Oh my god, all those training sessions, the people I'll meet. I mean, that alone is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but... <laughs> a one-way trip to Mars? You dirty, rotten liar gnomes. I love you, but I know you're full of shit. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's crazy, right? This is everything you want. It's who you are. It's just too scary to admit. I mean, first person on Mars. Could you even imagine? I know you like you know the names of stars. The other candidates will be way more qualified. Your eyes is crystal clear. And I doubt the school allows permanent sabbaticals. This home we built and everything that's ours. 
I should call Sebastian. Doesn't work if you're not here. Be right back. I'll keep looking. Yeah, I'm gonna burn her passport so she'll never go to Norway. And if that plan doesn't work, I'll find some other way to stall. And though kidnapping your girlfriend might to some seem like a poor way to secure her love, I'd rather that than live on Earth with no one here at all. I'm already talking to a wall. They do passport photos, yeah? Oh my god, you look fine. My eyes are closed. Oh, but, 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 you have such pretty eyelids. Oh, bye, bye. So I'll help you pack your suitcase, and for now, you'll have it your way. But in six weeks, we'll come home, and we'll keep doing what we do. For as long as I have known you, there has always been a Norway. You go flying off, then come right back. The back and forth, my love, is nothing new. I really hate this shade of blue. Thirty-nine minutes, thirty-five seconds. The time it takes to walk through the mall. The time it takes to drive from here to downtown Montreal. Not that long at all. The spin on the Earth is a little bit stronger. So a day on Mars is a little bit longer. By 39 minutes, 35 seconds, the time it takes to burn shepherd's pie. The time I take to find that pale red dot up in the sky. And think no one on Earth has ever been sent there. But what if I was the first one who went there? And if I went beer and the smell of an oncoming storm but mostly pizza and beer and getting caught outside in the rain getting caught outside with her in the warm summer rain do all the things i'd leave behind stand up to what i gain in 39 minutes 35 seconds The time it takes to walk through the mall. The time it takes to drive back home from downtown Montreal. Where the pale red dot in the night sky beckons. 39 minutes, 35 seconds. So for the most part, when Crystal is singing, you can trust that she's playing Naomi, our protagonist, but with Amanda, it isn't quite so simple. <laughs> Mostly, she will be playing Elaine, Naomi's partner, <clears throat> but just like in this next song, she'll be playing some other characters as well, and we'll try to call it out as it happens. I suggested wigs, like different wigs, but... <laughs> we scrapped that idea. Yeah, yeah we, we cut it during, <laughs> during sound check. Um, so the next song, <laughs> the next song is called Practical People. Um, so Naomi meets uh, the other finalists during this intensive interview week, uh, and Ben is going to be speaking for a few of those finalists in this next song. Uh, but one of the finalists is a Norwegian man named Sven, played by Jason. Uh, and Sven has a wife named Ingrid, played by Amanda, until the very end of the song, where she's actually going to switch back to Elaine for just a second. Stick with us. It's all going to be okay. And one of the questions that all of these finalists have to answer, obviously, is, are you prepared to leave your loved ones behind on Earth? Well, my wife and I were very practical people. 
We don't think one's emotions should decide how one acts. We're not unfeeling. We just find melodrama unappealing. Practically speaking, we stick to the facts. Did you defrost the Brussels sprouts? I did not. Was I meant to? I reminded you this morning before I left. My fault. We can boil the Brussels. Mm -hmm. Not as good, I know. But it would keep us on schedule. I move we roast them and push dinner back a half hour. I second the notion. I love you. I know. But this isn't what's for dinner. It is a one-way trip to Mars. When it comes to Mars, we're very practical people. We are thoroughly grounded. Dare I say down to earth? That was funny. Thank you. We, we are, are mature. mature. He I wouldn't, wouldn't be here if he wasn't sure that, practically speaking, this, this mission has worth. I follow the Thomas Kilman model of conflict resolution. I'm great at number one, competing. When it comes to fights, we're very practical people. We, we can deal with our issues, issues without clenching our fists. We don't cross swords, because all our fights take place on dry erase boards. Practically speaking, we make pro-con lists. Pro. I get to fulfill a dream I've had since I was a boy. Con, I'll have to take on the responsibilities of two people. Con, I'll be breaking the vows we made on our wedding day. Pro, your name will be written in the history books. Pro, you'll be married to a world-famous astronaut. Pro, I'll have the entire bed to myself. <gasps> Pro, we can conduct the first ever interplanetary naked video chat. When, when it comes, comes to sex, sex, we're very practical people. Because when he goes to Mars, I will have needs to be met. I'll sleep with Hans. Oh, I love Hans. And having sex with Hans has zero cost. But practically speaking, <clears throat> we're not on Mars yet. Oh. I hate when people talk about their marriages like third time's a charm or took me three times to get it right. Please, all three of my love affairs had their time and place and were exactly what they were supposed to be. Temporary. When, when it comes, comes to, to divorce, divorce, we're very practical people. We were always prepared for when this thing hit the skin. We picked a date. And we've divided, divided up our joint estate. So practically speaking, that, that just leaves the kids. Well, obviously, I would take full custody. Uh, pro, they would still have their amazing mother. Con, they would be missing their father. Con, I would be missing their birthdays, holidays. Pro... Con, no more summer trips to Sonia Fjord. Con, no more building Legos with Carl. No more eating those pies Merit makes out of construction paper. <laughs> Pro. Miss Cregan? Yes. Are you prepared to leave your loved ones behind on Earth? Fully. I have no significant ties that would lead me from going Look to the mission. In your eyes no significant other. It says here you had a commitment ceremony, but never signed a marriage license. Well, I have a partner, but she understands how important this is to me. We've decided to put the mission first. I've decided. Well, my wife and I, we're very practical people. Doesn't mean our emotions won't still make demands. And there's the catch. Despite the foolproof plans you try to hatch, practically speaking, it's out of your hands. Hey, sorry, Mr. Call. I've been in interviews all morning. So much to tell you. Uh, they asked about you, and well, I told them how important you are. Probably disqualified myself. But anyway, I love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Um, all right, so there are some people on stage that we have not introduced yet, and we weren't being rude. We just wanted to build the anticipation. We have Emma Ford on drums back here. And Simone Allen on piano. Yay. One Way is going to be part of NAMPT this year, the National Alliance for Musical Theater, and Simone will be our music director, so we're really lucky to be working with her. <clears throat> so this next song, it happens in the show when uh, Naomi finds out that Sven is having second thoughts. He plans to withdraw his application, and he actually tries to convince Naomi to do the same. 
Um, so uh, uh, Amanda and Ben in this song uh, will be singing for two of the other finalists, uh, Ciel and Yan, and this song is called Home. Late last night I had a dream, my wife and I were sitting in the porch swing after dark. My son was grasping wildly for a firefly. My daughter begged me take her to the park. And I've had dreams of jogging down a red sand beach and somersaulting past a distant star. But what I dreamed last night were things within my reach, my wife and I exactly as we are. At home, so safe, so real. And I don't know if there's another place I feel the way I feel at home. At least admit it's crossed your mind. What time is it? Almost midnight. Why? Right now she'd be tying up her hair in a messy bun. Right now she'd be drying off the dishes one by one. Later she'll be curling up in bed with a dog-eared book. Right now it comes rushing back the sound, the, smell, the feel the of her. Of home. Home. So, so real. And I don't know if there's another place I feel the way I feel. For a moment I hang in going to take a break from Mars. Chris is writing a podcast musical called The Cat Matey. It's about a gay pirate named Alistair who drifts the inadequate sea on an abandoned pirate ship filled with 30 cats. And he tries really hard to avo avoid adventures and other people, but he fails miserably. And Chris wanted me to stress that the story is not autobiographical in any way. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was so unscripted and unprompted. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is the theme song from The Cat Matey. Um, so one of the more successful ways that Alistair manages to avoid all people in adventure is he broadcasts scary propaganda uh, to try to prop up this myth of The Cat Matey. So that's basically this song. Um, I wrote music and lyrics for this. I asked Ben to arrange it for uh, piano and drums and this great crew of singers. Let's do it. Oh, it's that meowing from the mist that hissing on the waves. It's 
scratches past the mizzen mast and caterwauls through the caves. It's the most notorious ghost ship known throughout the pirate realm. With an unforgiving captain at its helm. Who's at the helm? Who's at the helm? He raises hairs on the back of necks of the saltiest sea dogs. You can say to yourself, he's just a myth, but then who's to blame? And you cross paths with the cat matey. I'd steer clear of his ship if I were you. He's the cat matey. Sailing the inadequa blue. That's a body of water. Up by a pirate crew when he was just a lad. Conscripted and then stripped of every single thing he had. Well, one day it so happened his whole crew just up and died. So now he drifts alone across the boundless sea, but with 30 cats. So therefore he's the cat lady. You can try to run, but you certainly can't hide. No, you can't hide, not from the Good, not a miscreant, just misunderstood like a sea cow. But we all know that the dude's insane. He's got a parasite spawn through his brain. Got him singing along to his cat's afraid. Yeah, that's how the cat made Who started out in life like you and me. So uh, Ben wrote music and lyrics for this amazing show. It's called The Apple Boys, um, with book by Jonathan Lyons. And I saw a production of it uh, last December at Here Arts Center in New York City. And it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> the sense of humor in it is right up my alley, so I just cackled through the whole show, basically. Um, it is set in turn-of-the-century Coney Island. Uh, it is about Jack, the grandson of Johnny Appleseed. Yes. You know? And he teams up with three friends to save his family's apple orchard. Um, those friends are mythic Coney Island characters. So Nathan, soon to be of hot dog fame, uh, Warren, the world's strongest man, and Hank, who designed the first <laughs> looping roller coaster. Um, so in this song, they are entering a singing competition to win enough money to save the orchard. Uh, it's called Heaven by Train. We are glad this newfangled subway makes it easier than ever to join us here in Coney Island. It was built with such state-of-the-art technology that no part of it will ever need to be replaced. I bet in a hundred years they'll be using the same signaling system and it'll be a beacon of efficiency the world over. Oh, I love to live in this great city that I won't dispute. And nothing brings me so much joy as my daily commute. Oh, it's heaven to take the train. I say sincerely that it's heaven to take the train. Does it drive me insane? Well, it's hard to explain, but it's heaven to take the train. I went to take the IRT and saw they raised the fare So I paid the extra nickel just to get to Union Square And I waited, 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 but there never was a train So I go to transfer overground when it began to rain Oh, the platform was so windy that my hands were getting numb Then I took a step and stepped into somebody's chewing gum When the train finally arrived, my soul was hanging by a thread Yes, I elbowed through the crowd and then the doors closed on my head Oh, it's heaven to take the train You think I'm kidding, but it's heaven to take the train it may cause you great pain it may be inhumane but it's heaven to take the train, the train. 
We were packed inside the car so tight the air was growing thin. Tightly pressed against a stranger and his sweaty, smelly skin. Then I hit a bump and suddenly I did a painful dance. For that sweaty, smelly stranger spilled his coffee on my pants. When I finally got home I had a fever and a chill. I think touching all the subway poles did make me deathly ill. And it spread so very rapidly that soon they called a priest. I just tried to get to work on time and now I am deceased. Oh, it's heaven to take the train. Quite literally I mean it's heaven to take the train. No more cause to complain, no more blood in your brain, you're in heaven. You took the train, you took the train. It's heaven to take the train. Heaven by train. The Apple Boys will open off-Broadway in early 2020, so stay tuned for more announcements. Back to Mars. So. Enough of that. Enough. Stop that, that's silly. Uh, so halfway, so well, spoiler alert, halfway through the show, Naomi is offered a spot on Crew One, and she accepts. So the second half of the show takes place almost entirely in a months-long training simulation up in the Arctic, uh, where her and Elaine drift further and further apart. Uh, the Arctic is the closest you can get on Earth to the conditions that they're gonna face on Mars. Yeah, and they're not really sure, Naomi and Elaine, they're not really sure how to navigate their relationship going forward. And one of the trickier parts of this, um, of this simulation is that there's an artificial 20 minute delay put on all of their incoming and outgoing messages, which mimics how it's actually gonna be once Naomi is on Mars. Um, so Amanda and Crystal, they're gonna sing this next song. It's called Phone Tag. I hope I'm doing this right because it said the file was too big at first, but anyway. Hi! Um, I know we left things weird, but I um, don't want to stop talking. Even if it's just trading video messages with this stupid fake 40 minute delay. Um, it actually reminds me of something that I used to do in high school. <laughs> My friend and I. Instead of talking hours on the phone, she'd leave a rambly voicemail, and I'd reply. It was our thing, our stupid way of feeling less alone. We could have picked the phone up, instead we let it ring. Guess we're just playing phone time. You're already fast asleep Guess I'll just leave you a message And list off every inside joke that we have Till I'm cut off by the beep <laughs> Anyway, uh, not much else in terms of news I think about you every day Soul day on Mars is called a soul. Okay, bye. <laughs> I remember you telling me about that friend. I too had a friend like that in high school. Anyway, hi. I think of you. I wonder what you're doing, where you are, what kind of shitty music you're listening to. But you were right. It's really nice to see your face each day and have a conversation at the speed of light. Guess we're just playing phone tag. Guess I just haven't reached you yet. Guess I'll just leave you and speak to you from 40 minutes ago. I'll take what I can get. Another message for you. 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 Another so unfair as I still remember the smell of your hair. Today at the 
hospital, there was this woman who had lost her husband and I almost felt for her and like I, I related with her, which is stupid because I, you're, you're not dead, obviously, but you're not here. And the back and forth messages are just, I don't know. Hope you're having a good day, soul, whenever you get this. Guess we're just playing phone tag. Hey, I got your last message. Sorry, I've been really out of it. Yes, we just haven't got it yet. Hey, sorry, only have time for a quick video today. Guess I'll just leave you a message. And let's pretend I'll actually catch you someday. Okay, tag, you're it. I was thinking about how I used to drive you to Pilates class. Another message for you. And I couldn't think of your instructor's name. Isn't that weird? Another message for you. Can you just break delay once so we can have a real conversation, please? Another message for you. Another message for you. Another message for you. Another message for you, another message for you. So the next two songs have some uh, wig switching for Amanda. <laughs> the second song you don't have to worry about, she's gonna be playing Elaine, it's called The Planetarium, and it's about uh, when Naomi is off at this training simulation, how Elaine struggles to fill her days. Uh, but before that, we're gonna do a song called Anyone at All. So this takes place during that training simulation. Uh, Naomi and her crewmate, Zoe, who will be sung by, guess who? Amanda. <laughs> uh, they're stuck in the Arctic with the same four people. They're bored, they're sexually frustrated. So they start brainstorming um, what kind of attractive astronauts they're gonna get on crew two, three, four, five, to sort of increase their dating pool. Um, this is anyone at all. I'm not particular about the particulars. Send me an old astronaut and I'll be fine. <laughs> So he has to be strong and smart and psychologically stable. Babe, those are the mission's high standards, not mine. All I want is a human, a decent, well-mannered human, a decently built, well-mannered, brown-eyed human with no credit card debt. As long as that's set, then it could be anyone at all. It could be anyone at all. He doesn't have to be young. He doesn't have to wear shorts. He doesn't have to be silver tongued or good at sports. He could be anyone at all, as long as they send him soon. He could have abs for days. I suppose. Look smarts to set your mind ablaze. Who knows? They could send the perfect human specimen. I'll struggle through somehow, as long as he is genetically predisposed to shed his clothes and get real cozy at the drop of a hat. Full stop, swap some DNA with me, then he's okay with me. All I want is somebody, a warm and sensitive body, a warmly over not sensitive bodybuilder, who's a Michelin chef and works for UNICEF, but then it could be anyone at all. It could be anyone at all. He doesn't have to swap. He doesn't have to chop wood. He doesn't have to speak French or even English good. It could be anyone at all. As long as he gets in. Here, Toby Calloway, Cadbar Mars at the speed of light. Frozen Han Solo style, smiling through the carbonite. His squeaky clean Apollo 13, Kevin Bacon. Matt Damon in The Martian. Sean Boyega, Force Awakens. Jenny Tatum, just because. Will Smith, Independence Day. Interstellar contacts. I clean 
the house. Magic eraser, every scuff mark in the hallways. I take a Brillo to the stovetop, and I always have to vacuum carpets where the cat's been basking. I'm awful, thanks for asking. I named him Ralph. He's so content to sit around all day and judge me. I do the same, but there's to-do list has that nudge me. Fold the laundry, weed the garden, bake baguettes. And while I'm at it, maybe get a few more pets. And I walk around the planetary. So Jason is going to sing this next song. He's playing one of Naomi's crewmates named Theo. Um, in this song, Yan, who was going to be on crew two and volunteered for a test launch of the rocket, ends up dying uh, when the rocket launch malfunctions and explodes. Um, this song follows directly after that. Um, so Ben and I, we're going to join him at the end. And the text that we're singing, it actually comes from a eulogy that was written for Amelia Earhart. Um, after her plane disappeared over the Pacific. And we actually use this text over and over again in the show. You'll hear it uh, in the finale we do at the end. Um, and we just think it sums up so perfectly why, why would you do something as crazy as going on a one-way trip to Mars? Um, and that eulogy text, it reads, in part, what they prove to themselves and to others is that we are no mere creatures of our habits, but that in the dust of which we are made, there's also fire lighted now and then by great winds from the sky. The song is called Smaller.
its walls and borders to the further that we go when i was younger how hungry i'd be to fly beyond the moon beyond the stars beyond the moon the sun the stars to see how great it's wonder how pale and faintly blue how small compared to So fly, won't you fly beyond and tell us what you see? So fly, won't you fly beyond and tell us what you see? So fly, won't you fly beyond and tell us what you see? So fly, so fly, won't you fly? and to others is that we are no mere creatures of our habits but that in the dust of which we are made there is also Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, ASCAP, for inviting us here, for having us here. Thank you so much to everyone here at uh, the Millennium Stage, the Kennedy Center. Um, this has just been so, so great. And thank you to our performers. Again, Crystal Lucas Perry, Amanda Savin, Jason Gote, <laughs> Simone Allen on piano, Emma Ford on drums. Thank you, guys. Mm. And thank you all for coming out to hear our work, everyone in the audience, um, everyone watching via live stream. Hi, mom and dad. Uh, if you liked what you heard tonight, you can follow One Way on Instagram, at One Way underscore musical, and you'll be the first to know about everything. Uh, we're going to do one more song uh, and then sing the finale for you. This song is called The Sky. We wrote it at 3 AM uh, the night before a reading we did a few years ago at Playwrights Horizons, and we knew we needed this this big final number that tied everything up in the show and night, you know, wrapped everything up in a nice neat bow and it was 3 a.m. and we were definitely not panicking right. at all. So. But thankfully, Naomi was having a similar problem in the show. Yeah. Um, at this point, she's made up her mind to go to Mars, so the only thing left to do is say goodbye to Elaine um, and she has no idea how, it just seems impossible. So what they end up doing is going outside and stargazing, which is what they did on their first date. Um, here's Amanda and Crystal singing The Sky, and then immediately after, the rest of us will join in for the finale. Thank you. Thank you. Which one's that? Over there-ish, sort of blue. That one's Rigel. In Orion, see the belt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what we did on the day we met. You remember? Yeah. Let's not go there yet. For now, let's just look at the sky. Yeah. 
you can just barely yeah that's jupiter a whole planet somehow brighter than the rest saturn's over there how could i forget show me which one's mars it's already set for now let's just look at the sky Thank you for joining us at Millennium Stage as we prepare for another performance.